Hello everyone, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Let's talk food, travel, live squared. My name is Andy Asher. We grow each and every day. Thank you for supporting us. When I launched everything 10 years ago, my vision was a gathering spot for folks over 55 like me, looking for the best resource anywhere for living a great life in our second half. So the rise of Bloomer Boomer, which grew to become a top 20 resource for our ever growing group of folks. To achieve that, we provided epic articles and content, information and programs. And this year we started our first live show and called it Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. Live Squared is about how to live life with authenticity. And we live stream the show every Tuesday. I hope you like it. And a little later in the program, I will show you three ways that you can help us grow. This week, we take an unplanned twist in the road. You see, uh, we hired a company to live stream our shows on Facebook and YouTube and various websites and social media. Then last week, they told us that we had to keep our show under an hour. Whoops, <laughs> uh, we had to make some quick changes. So this week, we had to push the following interview out to next week. And one day I went on a cocaine binge again. I wasn't supposed to, I was supposed to try and get sober. And I'll never forget Andy, she came in the door and she said, uh, I'm not even gonna try and look for you know, your stash because I know you have secret stashes. And she got mad, she threw something at me and she said, you're a loser and you'll always be a loser. And she stormed out the door. It was a captivating interview, but it will be pushed out to Tuesday instead. Now, Jack Levine tells a riveting story about growing up in a traditional household, getting addicted to drugs early in life, still able to graduate with a double major from an esteemed Eastern University back in the 70s. In the 80s, he was working as a high-level executive in New York. All the while, his personal life was tumbling down. What he tells us in next Tuesday's episode can be a lesson in life. Also, there is this. Hello, grown-ups! This is what 63 looks like, baby. Come on. I love movies for grown-ups. <laughs> I am a pushover for award ceremonies. I had never heard of the Grown Up Awards until poking around the PBS website, and I liked it. You know, I think it's because I, I never signed up for AARP. I'd never heard of the show, but I always book my Sundays for the award season. And this coming Sunday, I am booked for the Oscars. Yay! So I think we're going to call this segment Greta and Friends. I like it. Anytime my name's involved in a title, I like it. Greta introduces me to a lot of things that I have never heard of, and this show is no different. Joining us was Greta's friend, and now mine, Northern Idaho farmer, Jade Coyle, who along with his whole family, rediscovered an ancient grain unlike any. He grows and sells it, a difference maker for healthy living and longevity. <music> We can't begin anything before we check in at Mimi's kitchen. Hello. Hi. Today I'm going to make a chicken legs that I marinated in yogurt, olive oil, lemon juice, oregano, a lot of herbs, garlic, marinated overnight. I'm going to make it in the fryer, air fryer. It's going to be so good. And of course, I'm going to serve it with a nice whole wheat pasta that I already cooked and drained. And now I'm gonna dice some vegetables to add to my pasta. So I'm gonna be dicing all this and then we'll, uh, we'll come back later and show you how to cook it. <laughs> Thanks, Beanie. We will check back soon. So we are almost at the end of the travels in the Gulf Islands and the Salish Sea between Vancouver Island and the mainland coast of British Columbia. The warmth, the, uh, the beauty, recreational opportunities, uh, the sport fishing and overall sightseeing are unimaginably wonderful. Today, we visit one of the densest rainforests in North America. We are heading 
to Macmillan Park where we will find Cathedral Grove on central Vancouver Island that's 15 miles west of Qualcomm Beach and 9 miles east of Port Alberni on Highway 4. From Highway 19 and Highway 19A you take the exit to head west on Highway 4 toward Port Alberni and nearby communities include Coombs, Qualcomm and Parksville. Now we're visiting Cathedral Grove, which was a well-known tourist stop on the Alberni Road in the 1920s and 30s when the timber was owned by the Victoria Lumbering and Manufacturing Company. The park has been restoring some of its trails after a severe windstorm on New Year's Day in 1997, which changed the look of the park forever. Now the storm toppled hundreds of huge trees and obliterated uh, sections of the trail system. Some sections of the trail system were so badly hit that they have never been you know, fully reopened. Restoration and cleanup began almost as soon as the the wind stopped and although visitors will now find many of these huge trees lying on the ground their value has not diminished you know fallen trees open the canopy to provide light and space uh, shelter and nutrients for the next generations of plants natural generation is called is beginning to restore the groves uh, really pristine beauty and the park's diversity making a visit to Cathedral Grove all the more intriguing. Many species of wildlife use the old growth forest on their home, including several types of woodpeckers and owls, insects and reptiles, amphibians, deer, elk, black bear, and cougar. The Cameron River, which flows through the park, contains rainbow, brown, and cutthroat trout. A beautiful stop on your adventure on Vancouver Island. Next week, we wrap up our travels in British Columbia. Meanwhile, let's check in with Mimi in the kitchen. I'm back. I, uh, I dashed all my vegetables. Now I'm going to warm up my uh, pan here. And I put two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I love it. I love extra virgin olive oil. So those are the diced carrots, heirloom carrots. They are so good. Since they take more time, so I'm going to put them first. You know? You put first the carrots. And basil and, uh, and uh, parsley. I chopped all the stem. I like to cook the stem, stem of the, you know, herbs. I don't throw them away. Then it goes the shallots. All right. Oh, it smells good already. All right. Stir this a little bit so they can all get in there. So hit it with some salt, kosher salt. La bamba. I love this. This is the spices. I, you know, it's uh, Italian. Calabrian chilies. I love it and it gives a very nice um, Taste because it has garlic already in it. So you put it on here And then some pepper Because I want all the fragrance of the spices to come out. So this is just dried parsley This is dried basil Stir stir a little bit like that all right and then you add your zucchini diced zucchini it's gonna be like delicious and healthy voila you get that in there chopped garlic i uh, don't dice them very uh, very fine because I like to have a little chunks of garlic in there to so add that now you see that it's nice and searing all the vegetables now goes cherry tomatoes Kalamata olives and sun-dried tomato 
and I will let this all cook and come back to show you the how it all came up. All right. All right, Mimi. I am looking forward to it. This week, Greta and I speak with a northern Idaho farmer who is bringing back an ancient wheat grain with powerful health benefits. Yay! So I think we're going to call this segment Greta and Friends. I like it. Anytime my name's involved in a title, I like it. Anyway. The, yeah. Well, we'll yeah. talk about that later. I, uh, exactly. Because we can, gosh. yeah. I'll have my people call your people. Yeah, so all right. Andy, meet yes. Jade Coyle Jade. and, and audience. And the reason I want you to meet Jade is because I just, you know, I think I know it all when it comes to health and longevity. But there's a whole angle to this. You know, everyone's doing the keto diet, the paleo diet, the Mediterranean diet, which has a lot of grains. Um, but what? I think people need to get really savvy about is this thing, and Jade is the expert, he is the king of ancient grains and einkorn. And this is a root level longevity um, hack. Because if you're eating breads and pasta and cookies and cupcakes, we know that's a no-no, but there's a way to do that where it's actually a yes-yes. And I'm gonna let Jade address that. So Jade, give us, First of all, tell us a little bit that einkorn is kind of its own category, isn't it? Like barley or spelt. Tell us about it. Yeah. So um, I was uh, talking with a friend one day. And this was back in 2009. And he was telling me that there was this ancient grain that had been kind of resurfacing that had a different type of um, a different genetic makeup than modern wheat. At some point, thousands of years ago, modern wheat had branched off in a different branch through natural hybridization that happens in the wild, and einkorn had remained in its original state, while modern wheat continued to naturally hybridize in the wild, and this old ancient grain called einkorn had been preserved. And um, it was first discovered in, in these, uh, like, I guess you'd call them field trips that uh, the U.S. would do. They'd send out scavengers to gather seeds from around the world. And, um, and, and through that process, they came across these different varieties of wheat in Turkey, Iraq. Um, the, what, what, it, what we kind of refer to as the Fertile Crescent, that area where, um, as far as we know right now, that's where the first signs of agriculture happened. The, the very first, um, you know, they were doing crops and harvesting those crops as opposed to sort of just grazing and living off of what naturally kind of came up. And so um, that that area there, the ancient area of Sumer, um, that, that civilization is is where that um, kind of sprung up. And, and so einkorn seems to have come out of that area and they were growing it, and, and there are several signs. There's some ancient shipwrecks they found einkorn on. There's a there's a man that um, they found frozen. His name is Otzi, uh, the Ice Man, and they found they found einkorn on his clothing and in his digestive tract. And so it's this ancient grain that's different than modern wheat, but they share in sort of the same family of wheat, in that they both they all have gluten. It's just that einkorn has a different type of gluten than modern wheat. So is it gluten-free in the sense that we think of gluten today? No, it's not. It has okay. gluten. It's just a different type okay. of gluten compared to modern wheat. Okay. So typically somebody's going to use this to make dough. Is is that what they would be doing? Yeah, so we, we first uh, got our hands on some einkorn through a German farmer. And um, he he was able to get some seed and, and start at growing it. And we got him to ship us some. We had a translator working with us mm. and, and got him to send us some. And we started baking with My wife is a very talented baker. She'd be here on this podcast if she could. But um, there's one thing I want to talk about. And that is when it comes to longevity, you can look at the Harvard whole grain research. And it's really interesting what they talk about there. They're talking about the value of whole grains when it comes to fighting disease and when it comes to preserving our health and longevity. And so 
um, you can just Google Harvard whole grain research and you can come up with a lot of really good studies and research, long-term studies that they've done on the value of whole grains. So we would just take this grain directly from the farmer, uh, make sure it's clean, and then we were baking with it and this, this einkorn. And, and Julie found that it was very different to bake with than modern wheat. It, um, you know, we, we say that einkorn is easier to, to digest. It contains a different type of gluten that's easier to digest. And that shows up in the baking as well. It doesn't need to proof as long. It doesn't need to rise as long when you're baking breads with it. Um, but it also has a weaker gluten structure in it compared to modern wheat. And so where modern wheat has a really strong gluten and that strong gluten allows it to hold the gases in so the loaves rise really tall, einkorns tend to be a bit more dense. And so Julie's processes for you know baking have been around how to get a good rise to it and a, a nice bread that's still that bread that you love um, while doing it with 100% whole grain einkorn. And so that process is really what she's been refining. And, you know, today we can eat about anything, um, you know, in our house with einkorn with very little adjustments. It usually, as she's found, it came down to, you know, bake time that changes slightly. And in some cases, bake time doesn't change at all, but it can be a little bit shorter. And then rise time tends to be a little bit faster because it, it like I said, it digests more quickly. So it gases out faster and and rises faster and release, it kind of hits its climax faster than modern wheat does. Um, and then, um, you know, the, the big thing with einkorn, and, and they've looked into this, you know, when you when you look at what why is einkorn different than modern wheat? What what about it is different? Why is the gluten different? And if you get down into it, their einkorn has 14 chromosomes, two chromosomal pairs, both of them are the A chromosome, whereas modern wheat has 42 chromosomes. And so modern wheat is the combination of the, um, I always get this wrong, but I think it's the A, B, and D chromosomes, pairs. So it contains the A, B, and the D, whereas einkorn only contains a set of the A's. And those were introduced through natural, natural hybridization out in the wild. It's not a GMO wheat or anything. Modern wheat that we have here in the U.S. is not GMO wheat. It's just that it's been naturally hybridized over the years to be different than the ancient original wheat. Well, this is where I'm going to inter interject my longevity sort of ex field of expertise, having written a book on telomere biology, which is about telomeres, the protective end caps at the, at, at the on the DNA. So when I heard a little bit about this, and I looked into the fact, can't diabetics eat this food and it doesn't spike? It, it you know? yeah, it behaves differently on the glycemic index. It um doesn't uh have as big of an effect on the blood sugar levels yeah so that's a real important really important thing inflammation and all that stuff so as the telomere diva and i'm always looking at when i first talked about tel started talking about telomeres a lot of doctors didn't even know what a telomere was now everybody's like oh i know what telomeres are but whatever but it's about the dna so when you look at the dna of the wheat and you look at this fact that it's the i'm actually with and jade knows my partner in a company we're launching a thing called biblical baking more on that later but the point of um all of this is i'm actually looking at it from a whole other angle and again this is based on the dna the when people would ask me what's the best longevity um uh, what's the one thing you can do that's the most important and they're like is it this vitamin is it this diet is it this? no it's de-stressing it's mm -hmm. lack of stress so what in my life what i found is that my most relaxing moments have been i love to bake I'm not I'm not an expert on einkorn yet, but I love to bake. It's relaxing. It's a it's almost like a meditative thing. So I started going, wait a minute, this is like this is de-stressing. The health benefits are wonderful. The physical health benefits, all that good stuff that you just talked about. But how about the fact that when you're in that kitchen doing what you're doing, like what Julie does all the time, she's probably a very happy, peaceful person, just guessing. It's very relaxing. So coming at the longevity angle, which is what we're doing, Andy, here, from mm -hmm. a couple, this whole, the type of baking with the einkorn that Jade is talking about and that Julie's so proficient at and that my partner, Shirlene Sando, is an accomplished um, biblical baker. There's an element here of the longevity factor that isn't 
it isn't all uh, hard to understand. It's not all science. It's not all a lab. That's all important. But how about just get in your kitchen, bake some whole einkorn or ancient grain bread, relax, nutritious stuff, fantastic for your longevity. Yeah. And I, I got introduced first to Shirlene. She was on Facebook and she was posting all these different recipes and making all these different foods that looked amazing and delicious. And she was doing it with einkorn. And I said, well, I've got to talk to Shirlene. And so I reached out to her and that's how we came, became connected. But she's learned to bake um, so many different foods with einkorn, putting out different recipes yes. and kind of taking it to that next level to make it easy and approachable to people and myself even you know we, you're you're talking about de-stressing i by working with julie she's helped me to do baking and, and a lot of guys you might think hey they don't they don't really baking but i enjoy it in the winter time when you know i have a little bit more time to do things in the kitchen i like making sourdough bread i think it's fun it's relaxing it's it's a little bit sciencey where you're trying to get the maximum rise and yeah. they're just the right flavor and the right crumb and all that i it's really fun to do and it is relaxing and um, it's enjoyable and, and when you get the right loaf, it's rewarding. So, <laughs> so my theory is right. Yay! Yeah, I think I get, so. I think so. I get so. that Pulitzer Prize in anti-aging. But he, keep in mind during the pandemic, what was what, something that kept, it became a big craze? Sourdough bread baking. It, it, it was kept huge. People, right. It kept people sane. It yeah. kept them from going bazonkers. So... We're on to something, Andy. Yeah. Well, I don't think we uh, can l let Jade go without him talking a little bit about what you do. I mean, you're a farmer, right? Yeah. I mean, we're talking to the real deal here. I mean, you yeah. grow the stuff and all that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a real farm. But I, so I grew up on a farm, and we didn't grow wine corn on our farm growing up, obviously, but. Um, I moved away from the farm with my family and we were away for quite a few years um, and Julie and I always wanted to come back to Idaho. Um, it was where she's from as well and <clears throat> we live in eastern Idaho now. I grew up in southern Idaho but eastern Idaho is, is different. It's a higher elevation. Right now we have two feet of snow on the ground. We're not doing any farming currently <laughs> um, but we do have a, um, a grain cleaning and you know packaging so we can ship these grains to our customers that we've grown in the summertime and and um, in 2015 we started transitioning our entire farm to organic and I love farming it's it's my great passion is is just it's kind of like it it's, it's also why I find sour, sourdough baking intriguing because Sourdough baking is all about the microbes in your sourdough start and how that affects your bread. Well, on the farm, it's all about the microbes in the soil and how we help to build the health of our soil through regenerative and organic practices. And um, we we grow microbial teas and, and put those on with um, our irrigation water. And the microbes help to reju reduce the toxicity levels in the soil. You know, these farms, they've been organic now for long time and some we have new fields that are transitioning to organic all the time but microbes help to reduce and remove all the toxicity in the soil to um, take to be better um, at holding the water in the soil um, building a you know a chamber to hold the carbons in the soil and to retain water um, we, we use microbes throughout that whole process and we're constantly learning new ways to do that we also use crop rotation and um, some intercropping and working on doing more intercropping um, the, but um, all that goes into what i would call you know if you want to call it this an, an operating system where we can grow good food and um, if the soils are healthy then we can grow really good food and um, this this field where we're planting pine corn this spring um, you know we've been working on it for um, going on four years now uh, to get it ready for einkorn and um, we'll plant that this spring and harvest this fall harvest this fall and start shipping that out to customers and we do you know the whole grains to customers and we also um, mill it into flour some people don't have a you know a flour mill at home and so we we mill it for them and and ship the flour as well so it's it's a farm and it's also kind of 
I guess you'd say a mill, a family farm and mill where we ship these grains all over. And it's a science project. I mean, that's hard science you're talking about, the four-year project. Um, have to. I was talking to Andy earlier. You shipped me, and you don't sell it yet, but you're going to. It's going to be huge. He shipped me a bag of einkorn pasta. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, all right, let's see. Pasta's pasta. I have an Italian friend who's a hardcore Italian. Mm. Like, it's got to be Barillo. It's got to be homemade. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know about this einkorn. I made the einkorn pasta. I made it with just um, gr- uh, sauteed garlic, tons of garlic, chunks of almost burnt garlic. That's how I like it. Mm. And olive oil. And I got to tell you something. It was un. And as I'm eating, I'm like, I could eat as much of this as I want. I wouldn't even get fat. It's not even affecting my glycemic level. This is amazing. So that's going to be a huge hit. That was wonderful, Jade. It was so, so delicious. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, it's going to, it's exciting to, to, to be part of it. My brother joined in 2018, my younger brother, who uh, we farmed with growing up and farmed together growing up. And, and now we're back doing it together, which is really fun. And uh, we homeschool our kids, so they're part of the farming operation in different ways, and they get to learn and get experience with it. For us, it's a family thing, and it's something we we love to do. And the pasta is an exciting thing that, you know, it was really exciting. We started milling flour and shipping flour to people, and, and pasta will be another evolution where we get to make pasta, send it to people, and you don't know that it came from right here at, at our place. and. Um, we know what's touched it and, um, you know, we don't, we're not adding, uh, you know, anything to enrich the flowers or, or, or doing anything to change them from their original state. And same with that pasta. It was just pure einkorn. And I've sent it to several people. You know, you can't buy it from us right now, but I've sent it to several people and they said the same thing. The flavor was just, it popped. And I didn't expect that. I just, wanted to know if it fell apart or you know if it was it had a great texture the but, texture was wonderful i yeah, love the texture they've liked everybody's really liked it and so we're pretty excited and happy to hear that well it's cool too to hear your whole story because we live in these crazy times we're not going to go into that because i'll make a lot of enemies with my views on what's going on but um to have this be your family business to have it be your passion you've returned home it's all healthy it's all good it's like it's what the world needs right now we've got so much craziness that like just to have some just down home good food from good people living a good life it's wonderful yeah yeah well, and, and where and you said that you don't sell it now how can someone get hold of it so they can buy the grains and flour from us. Oh, okay. And and you know the grains and flour. I'll just kind of walk you through. I've got this bowl that I keep here that that uh, kind of demonstrates the difference of einkorn. So this is a. Hopefully you can see it, but yeah, can, is it yeah. going to let us see it? Beautiful. Yeah. 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 So there's okay. there's a head of einkorn, and then this is a head of modern wheat, uh-huh. and and so einkorn is is much smaller. Uh huh. Um, I don't yes. know if you see it too well, but it's it's a small head and it's a thin head. It has it's a diploid species, so it, a diploid has a, a row of grains on both sides, whereas modern wheat has four. It has it has uh, four different grains on each um, at, on each row going up. So modern wheat yields significantly higher than einkorn, and so. Um, when we grow einkorn in our field, we'll get way less out of it than we would if we had grown modern wheat. Right. And so the only way we can pay the land prices and the fuel prices and, you know, be able to economically be able to farm yeah. this versus, you know, the modern wheats is we have to charge more per pound for it. And so some people ask, why does einkorn cost so much? And it's not because we're out there making, you know, we, we, we grow it on our farm and then we have a few farmers around here who also grow for us because we don't have enough acres to do it all yet. We're we're at about 1,300 acres, but those acres can't all grow einkorn every year. Right. We have to rotate and change for it to be regenerative and sustainable. So, um, you know, wherever, it, wherever that einkorn is grown, it has to be viable economically and it has to compete. And so the only way we can do that is to pay more to the farm for growing those a- acres as opposed to growing, like say, hard red wheat or whatever. Right. 
So the economics play out in the end product as well. It costs more per pound, but that's how we make it viable. And we've had thousands and tens of thousands of customers that have supported us for years and they bought from us and we ship these grains or flour to them. And um, so they can go to our website to do that. Our website is einkorn.com. And E-I-N-K-O-R-N. E-I-N-K-O-R-N. Yeah, and that was a story of itself to be able to get that domain name long ago. I bet. I bet. And, and then um, a few years ago, we we found, you know, as we as we studied, we learned about other ancient grains aside from einkorn that have a place. Um, you know, some people are really interested in einkorn because of the digestive benefits or the flavor, nutritional profile of it. It's higher in protein, higher in antioxidants, higher in lutein. Um, it has some, it has benefits to it, you know, that stand on its own. But some people, maybe they don't have the budget for that or or they're looking for other characteristics in their foods. And so we have other ancient grains we offer as well. Uh, Coruscant, uh, which is an ancient Durham, um, Spelt, Emmer, we, we offer rye. And all of these other grains can be found on our other website, which is ancientgrains.com. And we're, uh, Andy and I were talking, the, the, the boomerbloomer.com website, um, we're, I know that Andy's moving in a direction to be able to, uh, at some point you guys had offered to give some kind of a code for a little bit of a special of some yeah. sort. So we're going to implement that. So people who are watching, keep looking at um, boomerbloomer.com, biblicalbaking.com will have promotions and information but definitely einkorn.com ancientgrains.com and just the thing to remember andy because when we started talking you're like well what do what do grains that what we're going to talk about longevity so we're talking about a really the the world of longevity isn't just stem cells gene therapy plasma phoresis telomerase activation it's also eating healthy, which people know, but that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I don't think you can argue with something that's been around as long as the biblical grains and that has the attributes that this stuff has. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. We're going to have a biblical baking boot camp. Andy, you got to come to it. You're going to shoot. We're going to do it. It's probably going to be in Nashville. We're going to do a biblical baking boot camp. More on that later. We're going to have Jade there and Julie. We're going to learn how to do this, even learn how to. This is getting back to basics, okay? I'm a city slicker, but I love this. I'm going to be in there kneading the bread and doing whatever you. I don't know, getting messy. I hate to get dirty, but I will. Um, We're going to have fun. I've got some baking friends who could come and help too that uh you know if we need more hands there to help because it i think just getting your hands in the dough and and feeling what you know this one is like and this one's like and then tasting the end products see how they taste flavor um that's where it gets exciting for people and it starts to come home to you know what are we going to eat at thanksgiving this year what 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 you know for sunday dinner what what are we going to have our for rolls and and you know it starts to i don't know become exciting for people and get them out of the stores more and into their kitchens and getting gathering their family around yeah it it almost changes your values about really what's important and the, the more you delve into something like this and what you do the more it encourages you to 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 live have a lifestyle like that and you enjoy it yeah well, it's like conscious cooking. You're conscious. You're yeah. not just grabbing a thing of white bread and going, let's slap some whatever on it, some bologna and mustard and call it good. You're you're very conscious about what you're doing, which is a cool thing. Yeah. So. Learned a lot today. I really appreciate it. Man, I had not heard of Einkorn, and I don't know how I could not. I mean, I, but I, anyway, it's great to know that this is uh, uh, something, and I'm going to study it, and I appreciate it, really. Well, it's great to be with you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jade. See you, see you down, see you on many, many different areas here talking about this stuff. I'm really, I'm about to go obsessed. I'm about to be obsessed, Andy. Okay. Hey, Jade, thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. I plan to get some of that grain and bake an apple pie. Yummy. Hello, the whole wheat pasta with vegetables is ready. So I'm going to plate it. 
Look how nice it is with all those nice vegetables and olive oil and Kalamata olives, zucchini, garlic. So it's all ready. So I kept some uh, of the things so I can put them on top like that. So you can have, and now the chicken in the air fryer. You wait until you see this beauty. Look at it. So this meal took me less than 30 minutes to make. And look at this chicken. Look how beautiful the color is. You just put it here. So I'm gonna, give me one second. There you go. Put some uh, parsley and basil on top, like that. Some basil oil that I love, love, love. It's better than, uh, actually it's better than Parmesan cheese. I like it better. And for the kick, a little aleppo pepper. Et voila. Look how beautiful it is. Less than 30 minutes. Air fry chicken. <laughs> it is wonderful. Look at the color. And then wonderful uh, whole wheat pasta with a lot of vegetables. So enjoy. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Mimi. We will see you next week. And thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. If you enjoyed this episode or you learned something new, I want to tell you three ways that you can support the show and keep Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared going. Number one, get yourself subscribed. Every week I am bringing on the uh, influencers and the people uh, who can teach you something or have something interesting to, to share, you know. So take a moment to hit that subscribe button. And then number two, this is the ultimate way to support Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared, and it takes less than a minute. You can write something short and sweet like, I love this show. It's changed your life or something you learned from it. I'm not exaggerating that I read reviews every single day and every single one, whether short or long, it really means everything to me. The more reviews means the, the higher we rank on those algorithms, which means bigger guests. So take a minute to leave a review. And then three, share the show with your friend. You know, just hit that share button. I'm eternally grateful. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And I will see you again next Tuesday for another episode of Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. <laughs>